Okay, today I want to show you guys how to create a bootable thumb drive. So, we use a utility called Easy to Boot. You know, there are several different formats that it, it supports. Uh, we typically use the ISO format, ISO. Um, one of the kind of cool things we like about it is that it allows you to create a little virtual machine to test the thumb drive to make sure it boots the way it's supposed to. Um, so we'll just download the one for Windows uh, 8 or 10. Hit run. And of course, Windows protects my PC. So we have a, um, the drive we're looking for is E drive. That's a seven gigabyte Kingston data traveler 3.0. Um, so the easiest thing to do is just English USA keyboard, make it to be drive. And it will, it will go through and, and create the drive. Um, it'll format it as NTFS so we can put larger ISOs on there. Um, this is going to, uh, so I'm just telling you that it's going to erase the drive, all, all data on the drive. So if you're going to create one of these, make sure you don't have a bunch of stuff on the drive you want to keep. Um, the files and things, you can move those off, uh, create the drive, um, because it has to go through and format it, uh, make it bootable, um, write the boot configurations, things like that. And then once you get it created, you can go through and copy all the files back on. I usually just I put a folder in my drive called utilities and just put all the stuff that I want to keep, um, documents, things like that, in those folders. So erasing and formatting drive two is NTFS. This will take a minute. So one of the ones we use a lot. Um, just grab it. This is this one. It's a uh, SanDisk Extreme Pro uh, USB 3. Um, we have a lot of luck with these. Uh, this one's 128 gig. And I think I have about 30 different ISOs on here. Um, you can install Windows with them um, with Easy to Boot. Um, Windows 8.1 all the way up to Windows Server 2019. Uh, there are different folders um, for different versions of Windows. Um, you can drop in the configuration files, your XMLs. Um, we can go through and do all the installation for you um, for as far as installing the product key, things of that nature. Um, works really, really well. We use it a lot of times for doing backups. Um, say we're using CloneZilla. Um, or, no, I've, I've had this a few times, where it's trying to dismount and it can't. Um, Yes. Or we're, we're doing virus removal. Um, we want to boot into a live Windows environment um, with something like Gandalf or Irons. Um, we can do that and recover data from drives. Um, a whole lot of different things that we do as IT people. Um, and they're, they're really, really handy. Uh, they're a lot better than running around with a whole bunch of CDs or DVDs. Um, and getting them all set up. So we're done. All you have to do is press enter to continue. And now our drive is created. So now we can go into E2B. And here is our E2B drive. In the boot menu. Quite a few different things in here. And 
BCD files for booting up Windows. All right, so you'll have two different partitions. Uh, one for um, the actual boot uh, of the of the sorry of the drive, and then you'll have one for actually dropping in all of your ISOs. So all the ISOs are laid out. Um, you see the ISO folder in data, uh, antivirus, auto, backup, uh, DOS, Linux, main menu, uh, utilities, uh, mem tests, Windows. So this is where you would put all of your Windows installs. Uh, we have Windows 8, Windows 7, Vista, all the way up to Server 2019. So you can choose uh, from a list of keys, uh, no key, uh, sample, data center, standard, standard key. Uh, a lot of different things you can do with it. Um, so if, if you want to put in a Windows 10 ISO, you would put in your ISO in, in this folder. Um, and then whenever you go into the main menu, and I'll show you, um, it'll have that in there for you to be able to boot into Windows. I'm just going to do a small one just to show you guys how to do this. Uh, I'll put in backup. So we'll go storage. Big ISOs folder here full of stuff. So I'm just going to just drag and drop one on here. We'll do Clonezilla Live. And this isn't a very fast thumb drive, one I'm using. Uh, Kingston Data Traveler. But it works. And we'll do something else. Uh, once this is done, I'll drop, drop a live Linux on here. Find a good live Linux. Then we'll use the menu and I'll show you how it actually works. Um, see the, the green button here, test with Kimu. So what it'll do is this is a, uh, a quick emulator, that's what it stands for. It a, creates a small virtual machine with like a one gig drive and it allows you to boot into your um, your live uh, bootable thumb drive and be able to test out the menu and make sure things work the way they're supposed to before you, you know, actually reboot the machine. I should have picked a smaller live environment. This was pretty pretty slow copying over. Of course, if you're doing this and you're not recording a video, the time really doesn't matter, I don't guess. But, um, all kinds of different things you can boot from. I have a ton of ISOs on here. Komodo rescues 51 megabytes. see drop that one in antivirus I'm just going to and Daryl's going to take forever I'm just going to kill that one and Komodo rescues drop it over there and of course you're really only limited by the, the size of your drive you can put a ton of ISOs on a thumb drive all right, so we're going to test with Kima, and this is this is what the menu will look like. You don't want to close this out; the window stays open. 32 emulation RAM, 500 megabytes, no hard drive, um, VGA standard boot, and it's just telling you what it's doing. Of course, on a typical computer, it boots faster than this. So you can also change the wallpaper. Um, this is a default. 
Um, and I have a little spinning ETB logo. There's a whole lot of different stuff you can do on here. Um, I'm not sure about this one, but the last one had a batch file um, that was pimp my drive. So you go to antivirus menu, that's where we dropped uh, Komodo. And we only have the one in there, so I'll just choose Komodo. And now I should boot into a uh, live uh, Linux environment for Komodo antivirus. So in a graphic mode, may not have enough RAM to enter graphic mode, but we'll try it anyway. It only has 500 megs of RAM. This, this really isn't meant, I, don't, I wouldn't think, to actually boot into the environments, but um, we're booting into them anyway, just to see. So now it's back up. Um, took a little while to load. Of course, it's a 500 megs of RAM, no hard drive. Inside a little VM. And we wait. So this is, you know, Komodo cleaning essentials. Um, I'll make a video in the future showing you guys how to go through and do a virus scan uh, with multiple um, live environments. Um, so this thing doesn't even have a network, so it can't download updates. But anyway, um, that's how you create so Control Alt to get out. That's how you create the the VMs. Sorry, uh, that's how you test with a VM. Small. Um, VM. Uh, let's test your thumb drive. Uh, so you guys get to work, make some thumb drives, and uh, boot into all kinds of stuff.